What's up, y'all? I have been trying to get this video done for a while. I had to order the parts for it. And we talked about this on Saturday Morning Live, like, I don't know, 12 or 13 or something like that. Changing out the cylinder on a Yale. This is a exit device trim. However, they're also used in the Yale heaviest duty lever handles. The cylinder is different. The cylinder tailpiece specifically is different in those and you have to have a special part to, uh, to retrofit a cylinder. So that's what we're going to talk about. So as uh, we talked about in that Saturday morning live, I've got this Yale. This is a panic device trim. A lever handle. Already peeled the sticker off. They come with stickers. This is, this is one of those pet peeves of mine. So they take the sticker right here that says, what does this sticker say? Already peeled it off. And I will say it, it does peel off, but it still leaves a little bit. It says, please do not insert and rotate key into the keyway until the trim is fully, why are we not focused? So the trim is fully mounted and bolted to the, that's to keep people from, uh, you know, having it the wrong way. Uh, so these Yale uh, exit device trims and knobs come with a cylinder that is a little bit unique. They come, uh, the functions are here. What is this? Which trim is this one? This was 446. So this is FOA key locks and unlocks. They were freewheeling labor. Uh, always uh, is probably going to be one or two like dummy, well, dummy passage or uh, storeroom function, which is part of the FO3. But anyway, this is the whole, I'll let you take a screenshot of that. If you need it for some reason, it tells you how to mount it, of course. It tells you how to lever handle removable. Lever handle removable. What the heck? Adjust lock for door thickness. You screw the, uh, looks like you gotta do, oh, you gotta do quite a bit to adjust it. Probably comes two and, uh, or inch and three quarter standard, and then you've got that. So with the uh, exit device trim, you're always gonna order the inside and the outside as two separate pieces because there may be, uh, a, you may not want this trim or you may have wanted a different function. So clutch, freewheeling clutch. That means this way it's unlocked. See it's turning right there. And if we turn the key counterclockwise till it stops and then turn it back and pull the key out. We see it's locked, so it's not turning right there. Uh, but you can still push it down. It's just, that's a, uh, it's kind of an abuse thing. To keep people from standing on it or, or vandalizing it or abusing the lever. And then when you turn down and it, you can feel it kind of click right there to the 180 degrees, felt it kind of click and that, what does that do? Unlock it. So yes, uh, if you come up to a door and you got to rekey these and just turn the key down, turn down for what? Turn it directly down, push in and it comes off. Of course, this would be mounted on the door. So this would be all you were dealing with. So pull our key out and drop it. And we see there's where we run into the problem. You got a phone call and you say, hey, somebody just put a new uh, a new push bar. The door guys just put a new push bar on my door. And this is uh, this key, my, my master key won't fit it. I need a cylinder, but look at this cylinder. Number one, this is like a, uh, just a guide, a holder you should say. But look at how this cylinder is designed. The tailpiece, where normally you would have a screw cap or just a clip, it does indeed have a clip. That has a roll pin that's driven through, completely through, that holds this on. So of course this, you can't just take this and use on a screw cap. Uh, now I will mention you need a hollow plug follower. You don't have to take this off. You just take the clip off and follow it out like anything else. You just have to have a completely hollow plug follower that this would go over. And also with some plug followers, you need to be kind of careful because if you had it, say, turned something like that. See, it's got that cutout. We're going to talk about that cutout, which is kind of weird. 
But if you had it turned that way, which would be silly because you'd be dumping the pins out as you pulled it out. Uh, and it also caused these top pins to drop down. So that wouldn't be good to do at all. Uh, but the main problem is, is you go and you grab, let's say, a LA cylinder, Sergeant LA. This happens to be a LSDA, but you can also have GMS, you have uh, Ilco brand, and you know half a dozen others that make Schlage style cylinders or standard cylinders. When you dump out the tail pieces that come with that, the only long one that's in there is actually for a deadbolt because it is it's called a lazy cam, which means the cam has these cutouts which stop on the back of your pin. Let's turn that key straight up. So that cutout is allowed to rotate back and forth with that thing I just dropped. So it has to be rigid. If we see here, it's rigid, doesn't turn. So a lazy cam wouldn't work because you'd be turning the key and uh, the timing would just get thrown off. Also comes with a few shorter rigid cams like we see, like we're used to if you're used to putting those on. Uh, however, the only problem is once you put that the longest rigid cam, or what is this, RM? That's rigid medium. We're missing the rigid long. It comes with a, uh, comes with, where's a rigid long? Let me go find a rigid long. Even the rigid long that was medium, and the long is not much longer, and it's definitely not long enough to engage what needs to be engaged here. And also, it's half, it's about three quarters the size. It's not nearly wide enough not nearly it's not nearly it's not gonna work uh, during that time my bright idea was to take a Corbin Russell because Corbin Russell uses a similar a similar setup and if you look at it side by side you would think hey you know I think that'll work I think what didn't work because of this was a couple of reasons because the cylinder sits see the face of it if you line the faces up See the, see the difference there? And if you just put this into here, uh, it goes, number one, it goes too far. Uh, and number two, it just didn't activate it. And the only thing I can think of, it activated it, but it turned, it kept turning. It wasn't activating it correctly. I marked it right there. What's happening there is that's where, if you look down into the bottomless depths of this thing, focus. Shine a little light down in there. See the little teeth? See those two little teeth? That's where the uh, that's where that tailpiece goes into. And see how deep it is? While we're in here looking, look at this. There's no there's no projections on the inside, right? Up until you get to the retainer right there, and then the tailpiece goes through the very back. Uh, I do not know, honestly. I don't know what the cylinders have that cutout for don't really know because if you also look at the back of this there's only a recess there's no like notch or anything and that doesn't really make sense because like how it pokes out right there's no real there's no real need that I can see for that notch being in there right there that doesn't like it, that doesn't do anything. So, once you focus, uh, once we get our cylinder, get our cylinder keyed up, and uh, we're gonna go ahead uh, and see what comes in the K kit K001. Make sure you order kit dash K001 because K001 dash YA is is a is a Yale cylinder. We don't want that. We want the kit. It comes with three pieces. The long bar that we're looking for, yay! A plastic doodad, and then uh, it's like a cylinder spacer. I've got them all laid out here. We're gonna take this off. And, uh, oh, come on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Focus. Okay, grab that, put it in pretty much the only way that you can because it's a lever handle, so it's gonna be, oh no, 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 don't jump anywhere. Get back down in there. 
lever handles are almost always going to be vertical on the bar part. I'm going to tighten it down all the way, back it off like a notch and a half, and check it out. Now, check the key, make sure the key comes out. Now we're going to compare the cylinders again, and again, it uh, look how far back it is. So when I first took this out, I wasn't sure. I thought that they this was just like a vanity cutout, maybe. For something in the lock but it's not and then I thought well maybe it's a cutout if you put it over now this plastic piece is flat I'll put it point that out it's flat on both both ends let me move it over here maybe it won't be so dark flat on both ends right that's just plastic tree sprue things uh, so then I was like well maybe Maybe that cutout is to keep the pin from pressing down. So we're going to flip it over. Push it all the way down there. Focus! Uh, but as I got to looking at it, it pushes it down. It still, see how it pushes that pin down? And if this was pushed in this way, to equal the length of this cylinder, then every time you turn it, that's gonna push, it's gonna push in on my pin, right? We don't want that. So uh, we're gonna take this off and I, I guess, I don't know for sure, I am not a GMS kit dash K001 expert, but if we flip it over, we see this kind of weird cutout, which I thought maybe it was just, uh, you know, the cutout for the, uh, how it's made, how, how, why it was made that way. I, I don't know what it was for, but if we slip it over, flip it the right way, slip it over. Get in the light so you can see it. There we go. With that cutout, it actually goes just over, just over the pin, and if we push in, it doesn't push in. It pushes in, but it doesn't push in as far, I don't know. I don't know which way is right. Neither way. doesn't push it in as much it still pushes it in I don't know which way it would go but whatever the case is uh, if you know post in the comments for sure but we're just gonna presume that's the correct way may not be but is what it is uh, and then we will slip our we need this little thing right here because if we put this cylinder in that oh hey jump out Sloppy, so we gotta put this on. Gonna center it, put that in, push it down, and then it looks like we may have face to face just about the same thing. That pokes out, that would poke out about where it was when we took this cylinder out. Drop the cylinder down in there like that. Make sure the face is sticking out. Put key in, turn it back to about that same position that we were at before. And uh, as you put it on, because it's so long and like floppy, you just have to kind of carefully, you don't want to like sit there and shove, 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 but once it goes where it needs to go, it'll stop on the retainer, it'll push the retainer in, the key make sure the retainer just clicked back in the position so now it's unlocked put the key in check it pull it out turn it back to the locked position that way heard it click and we can see it's not turning so there we go that is the answer to can you use a sergeant key with a yale 
lever handle or exit device trim? Yes, you can. With the GMS KIT-KO1-YA. Thank you, Jeff Moss, for letting me know about that uh, because I don't really ever surf the website of GMS, so I had no idea it actually existed until he let me know. Now I have them in stock. Another part to keep up with, or bag of parts, I should say. I'm ready for seven or eight more of them. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments on that, uh, post them in the comment section. If you know which way the little plastic doodad goes, if you think I had it right, post in the comments. If you don't think I had it right, uh, then you, you can post in the comments too. Uh, but that's how it's going to go because neither way seemed really perfect. Anyway, thanks for watching, y'all. We'll catch you next video.